Hello, Stephen. Thank you so much for being with me today. It's an honor to have you on the show. And honestly, Sarah, this is a real blessing. And I don't know, I'm just real excited for what God is up to in this hour, right? I mean, it's this is one of the most key strategic times to be alive as a lover of Jesus. Yes, I agree. I was actually, I met with a Tongan apostle yesterday and she just kept saying to me, like, Sarah, these days, these days to be alive and, and to be doing the work of the Lord. What a joy. What a privilege. You hit the nail on the head. Amen. Absolutely. Amen. Absolutely. Um, so jumping straight on in, Stephen, I'd love if we could begin today with you just sharing your, your personal awakening with us, or even the story of how you came into the prophetic. I'd love to hear it. Yeah. You know, my, my personal awakening is that I was actually a fashion model and an actor for eight years. I was knee wow. deep in the lake of fire, caught up in <laughs> all the pleasures of the world. But, you know, the interesting thing is that in that, you know, uh, living life and at the end of the day, the beginning of every day, you, I there was always this question, what is life really about? I mean, we'd be partying wow. with the who's who, you know, at actors' homes and just see like they were just as depressed as I was. They just had a whole bunch more money to put up their nose than I did. You know what I mean? And so it was in that time where I just begin to ask the questions like, what is life about? You wow. know, and at that time, my wife, Renee, who's my wife now, we were dating at the time. In fact, she was actually my agent. Uh, how about hmm. that? You know, so we actually <laughs> met in the industry, but, you know, both of us kind of had just, just questions going on. And so I would say in that season, there was really this, this seeking and asking, like, what is life about? And it was from, from that place. I mean, really an honest quest is that, you know, God began to like whisper to me and I'll, I'll say it like this, is I remember I was, I was actually on a, on a modeling contract in, in Barcelona, Spain. And one of the guys I was living with in the hostel, his girlfriend had come over and she was originally from India and she was big into the new age stuff. And she whips out her tarot cards and she starts doing all this stuff. And like, she's like, does any of this make sense? And I said, no, not at all. This is stupid. You know what I mean? It was like, <laughs> nothing what you said makes sense to me at all, you know? And so it, that was just part of it. I think it really was the Lord's protection because there was wow. a real sincere quest to find truth. And I think out of that, mm -hmm. that's where that awakening began. And I remember one day, I was uh, in Barcelona. I was only going to be there for another couple of days. And then I was moving on to Madrid with just the circuit that we were doing with, with modeling. And so I remember going down to the old part uh, of, of the, the Spanish mission where the queen would have given Christopher Columbus the orders to even explore to come find uh, America. Wow. And so just living in just some of the, the nostalgia of that. But then I turned down this one street. And there's this massive Catholic cathedral. And, and, and again, I don't know how it's like in, in Australia and so forth, but for sure in Europe, many of the, the large cathedrals today really are more museums than they are really, I would say, quote unquote, places of worship. And so, I mean, you still can connect with the Lord and don't get me wrong. But, but I remember going into this building. Actually, I was walking across the street or on the other side of the street and I heard this voice say, go inside. So I was like, wow. oh, okay. So I walked across the street, opened this big, thousand plus year old door to this cathedral and went in and as i went in there was you know these statues of of jesus and the disciples and these paintings all over the place and just kind of caught up in that just the really just the art I, I like art and so it was it was kind of cool that way but then i heard this in one of the small chapels just down the hallway i could hear this chanting going on so i thought well, i'm gonna go see what that's about and i go in there and it's this priest and three little old ladies wow. you know well, I don't remember if it was Latin or Spanish or Cantalonian. I, I couldn't remember, uh, honestly, what, you know, I, whatever it was. I, I couldn't understand what they were saying, but I just kind of did what I knew how to do. And I kneeled down in the back and I just began to feel just this warm presence come over me. And also my heart's wow. been walking. And, and I'm like, whoa, what is, what is this I'm feeling? Well, then I'm looking up at the, up at the front. And if you've ever been to a Catholic or Lutheran style church, um, they've got Jesus hanging on the cross. So that's like front and center. And so as I'm looking at Jesus hanging on the cross, all of a sudden, Jesus lifts his head and he begins to talk to me. So this inanimate Jesus, wow. all of a sudden, lifts his head and he begins to say, I am what you're looking for. You don't need to look any further. It's my love. That is what you're looking for. Oh, and, I, so I'm, oh. and so I just begin to weep, Sarah. I mean, I'm weeping and weeping. And part of it, I'm going, why am I weeping? And yet I knew while I was weeping and 
And all of a sudden I'm being awakened going, God's real. You know what I mean? And like in that moment, I knew God was real. It was no longer this, this distant, far off, angry God. I could hear his voice and this inanimate Jesus is now alive speaking to me. Wow. And the words are cutting to my heart. And so this went on for a while. And, you know, I would say that was the beginning of really my awakening. And, you know, it was over a period of several months. And the cool thing is that Renee, at that, my wife, Renee, who we were dating at that time, we had uh, some friends of ours in Hollywood get saved. And there's other people around her that got saved. They began to actually, you know, share the gospel, share wow. God with her. So simultaneous, we're, we're half the world apart from one another. God is like gripping us with this reality of his love, you know, and I find it interesting to me is that, you know, I, I never had anybody preach to me. Nobody like came up to me and was preaching the gospel. So I didn't you know a lot of things, but th the cool thing is that in a moment I, I, I was hearing God's voice. And so then I just treated it as normal. I'm still living right. in sin. I'm still living because I didn't even hear the full gospel yet. I didn't know I needed to repent. I didn't need to, to know that there was things that needed to change in my life, but I was being apprehended by that perfect love. Right. And wow. so that love just caused this awakening where I knew in that moment where I could like talk to God. And I was talking just like you and I are talking, I would talk out loud. And then it was almost like I could hear him, you know what I mean? Like, like almost like he was in the room with me and, you know, I cool. again, didn't have any grid for any of this, but to me, it was, I would say for, even from that day on, it was like just the, the prophetic dimension was opened up. And right. Even some of that, Sarah's, I would say is even tied to, to my heritage. So I, I've got Native American in my background. I also have the Gaelic and Celtic, which are the Irish and the Scottish, who are very spiritual and all of that too. So part yes. of it, I think there's there's some some of the prophetic components that are even tied to the heritage that all of a sudden I'm being pulled into and awakened to. Because I mean, even as a kid, I would see visions and I would have these dreams, sometimes very weird dreams. Right. Um, you know, and I know that all of that's part partly and tied to the to the gift of the of just the prophetic that I was really destined to walk into and so you know over a period of time more and more you know I remember the night that I actually confessed Christ and we were actually in Renee's aunt and uncle's living room and uh, he was a former pastor his first wife had died uh, of brain cancer and had met Renee's aunt and they got married right. and we're, there's a Christmas party you know again I'm still living my own life, still partying, and yet still having conversations with God. And and months had gone by wow. for Renee. We never talked about God, you know? I mean, it was never part of our conversation. It was never part of our life before. And But it was just really cool. As we're sitting in his living room, we just asked him some questions. And he was like, whoa, wait a minute. Can I go get my Bible? And then he gets his Bible, Sarah. And then he just begins to break down the simplicity of the gospel. and oh, that's opens beautiful. Up the book of God, talks about being born again and we receive Christ, like fully repent. And he just, wow. you know, just broke the gospel down so simply, right? And it was just like, again, I'm feeling that peace that was that I had felt in that church. Like, whoa, this is so, like, so amazing. And the reality was I was drunk, as you suppose. You know what I mean? I literally, <laughs> I still drank substantially, you know? So I literally was. But then he goes, how would you like to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit? And we're like, yeah, I, well, I went. I said I was sprinkled as a kid. Does that count? He goes, no, no, no. this is a way <laughs> different kind of baptism. <laughs> and so, next thing you know, he goes, well, this is how it is. And again, he just looked, took took us to the scripture, and he goes, you know, wow. you know, I'm gonna lay my hands on you. You might feel something. You might feel nothing. He goes, but I just, God wants to give you this gift because it's really a gift, and it will set you on track. And literally, as he laid his hands on me, it was like a ball of fire is this big hit me at my innermost being. Wow. And I'll tell you what, I mean, I went from like, ah, just like a scream. And honestly, instantly there was demonic stuff leaving. Right. So there was deliverance happening in a moment. And I like, again, I was drunk as you suppose, but all of a sudden I'm completely sober in my mm. right mind and overwhelmed by this fiery love of God and all of a sudden, I just began to erupt in this language that I'd never even heard of tongues and was never exposed to tongues or anything like that, and just was over, overcome by God's amazing grace. And, you know, honestly, from that day, again, like I say, the light switch was on. And I mean, and angels started showing up within days. And I was seeing demons on people, even as I was walking in the mall and like walking up, like, Renee, look at that guy. He's got like a demon. And she's like, what? I said, he's got a demon on his back. You don't see this? She goes, no, I don't see that. I was like, how can you not see that? Look at that thing. Wow. You know, so I didn't even know that. All Christians didn't have that, you know what I mean? And so 
I found out not too long after that as we started attending, attending church, they tried to tell us the things that we were seeing and feeling and sensing and, and encountering couldn't be happening. We're like, uh, I don't know, but I saw everything that I've been encountering in the Bible. Uh, I'm pretty much going to stay with what I'm seeing in there. But yeah. to say that, you know, it, it began to really open up this whole prophetic journey um, into God's amazing love. And, you know, and I, I just love God's kindness and goodness because, you know, even in, with just the strongholds and stuff that I'd open my heart up to, you know, the drugs, the alcohol, all of that stuff. I mean, God just began to peel the layers off and just set me free, you know? And to me, that's just the beauty of it all anyway, right? Is that yes. friendship and relationship with God is he wants to make us look like him. And the Amen. more we fix our gaze on him, Sarah, woo, it's just so, so good, right? Man, so, so good. good. We transform from glory to glory into the yes. same likeness to the work of the Holy yes. Spirit. It's unreal. I love it. I love it. I love it. It's so very cool. And so thank you for sharing that with us. I love the thread of the prophetic um, through your journey. And you and you touched on um your your heritage in the in the natural, Stephen. So I want to jump deep down in because I'm as you know, I'm very excited to hear you tell us all about this. Um, but I wanted yeah. to ask how First Nations people are uniquely positioned to really steward and bring forth the promises of God over a nation. You know, and I, it's interesting because, you know, at the time we were living in Wisconsin and, and so I, I'm part of the, 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 the tribe, the Chippewa tribe, which is in northern Wisconsin and Minnesota, and then even some parts of uh, southern Canada. Um, and so I would say that it was real interesting because immediately there was this dimension that I felt even authority that I had even to speak when times we would get into some times of like prophetic intercession and I begin to see and all of a sudden realms would be opened up and I begin to just see things in the spirit like over over territories and over places and I just begin to speak and I could just like feel like just this like dimensions of weight and authority that would come on me at those times and we were you know we, we ended up doing like these prophetic declaration journeys like all over the whole state of Wisconsin. And it's interesting because the, the name Wisconsin uh, is actually a Chippewa name, which means the gathering of many waters. And so there was oh, something wow. to that. And so what the Lord had led us to do is to go to every waterway that if you got in it, you could go to the ends of the earth. And we went in and we poured oil, we poured salt, and we made the declarations and decrees that as we stand, even at, in these places, like literally Wisconsin would not only be a gathering of many waters, but it would be released into all the nations mm -hmm. of the earth to bring about the redemption of land and purpose and, and people, you know? And so, you know, in one of the places we went to uh, it was the Apostle Islands. Love which was it. Kind of yeah. yeah. And so there, and, you know, a lot of it, that was all part of the, the tribe that I was part of. That was all of their land, you know? And, and we went and stood in that land. And as I was standing there, I could just, it was like, I could just feel like this whole dimension of authority. And then all of a sudden the father would say, now say this, and I would say it. And it was like, just a whole nother dimension, I, I would guess, of authority, you know? And there, there was times where actually the Lord would have me take my shoes off and literally get my feet in the dirt. And like, literally, what he was saying is become one with the land. Yeah. You know, when, you, when you think back that when, when God created Adam, he created him from the dust of the earth, right? Yes. And so even us as mankind, there's a component where we really are part of the earth, right? Mm. And so as I did that, there was this dimension of like literally feeling just this oneness with all of creation, you know, and some people could say, oh, that's new age. No, it's not new age. I'm telling you, we have been created in God's image. And, you know, I like even how, what, what Psalm 115 verse 16 says is that, you know, you know, the heavens were created for God, but the earth was created for mankind. And so this mm. idea that even out of the dust, we were created and to the dust will return when we, when we pass from this place too. And so there's, there's that component. But what I felt that even when I had put my feet in the dirt, again, there was just this dimension of like confidence and boldness and authority that came over me, even as we began to make declarations and decrees just for the, for the healing grace and the healing fire of mm -hmm. God's you know, purposes. And uh, there's a scripture actually in, in Joshua, you know, in Joshua chapter one, and this is in verse three, it says, every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given to you. And I think that that was part of it is that God was showing that, that literally, and that's why it wasn't, it's fine with the shoes, but I'm telling you, there's something that when you take your shoes off, <laughs> where the yes. soul, it wasn't just the sole of my shoe, it was the sole of my right. foot yes. touching the land. It was like, all of a sudden the land has to respond to the Christ that's in us and that authority wow. that, you know, 
I mean, because you know, what does Psalm 24 say? You know, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness yes. thereof, right? And so part of that, we're created in his image and we've got Christ in us. So there's this inheritance component that happens as well. You know, it's pretty powerful. Wow, that's super powerful. And I was saying to you when we first met um, in Dallas last year that, oh, I love getting my feet on the land too. And so I was so keen to unpack this with you. And I, I wondered this, Stephen, obviously, well, not obviously, but I'm not a First Nations person. And so for those of us who are listening, who perhaps don't have that kind of heritage, um, but we, you know, we love the land and we carry the heart of God. Um, how can we partake in this as well? Yeah. Well, you know, and I think I, I just, I'm just reminded of another scripture actually in second Chronicles seven fourteen, And we often just think, think of this, but I, I want to read this and where I want to focus is on the last part of it. It says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. So there's the forgiveness of sin component, and that's where we mostly look. We seldom actually look at the land. And land wasn't like, you know, a government structure or it wasn't a, a family right. structure. It literally is the planet. Like the land is what yes. he longs to heal. And so he really began to really show me that that's really part of the grace that God wants to do is he really wants to heal the land right now. I'll tell you what, all the creation is groaning in this season. And, you know, I was, I was in a, in a conference back in October in Portland, Oregon. And all of a sudden I just began to see everything shaking and God's saying, we're entering into a real seismic season where things are going to begin to shake, even in the natural realm, just as it is in the heavenly realms, the natural realm. And I saw like volcanoes and all kinds of stuff. And, you know, within weeks after that, uh, there in the island of Hawaii, uh, a second volcano. So there's two active volcanoes erupting at the same time. And wow. but I feel like part of that really is there's there's a dimension of healing that as you and I come into the fullness of who we are as the sons and daughters of the Most High God, and we enter into the reality of our destiny and who we really are. I'm telling you, that's when the land is going to respond to who we are. It's going to come into that place of healing and alignment with the reality of heaven. And so I just, that's been one of the scriptures that I've really held on to because God really wants the land to heal. In fact, the land really wants to be healed. Yes. And as, as even as we allow just the healing grace of God to come into our hearts and whole new levels, and even as nations are healed, and I'm talking now people structures are healed, that the land, the physical land itself will be healed. But you asked the question about what, what if someone's not uh, an indigenous or a first nations person? Well, it's interesting because after that first time with me in, in, in the United States doing that, I began to travel to nations. And as I really felt the connection with the people there, the Lord said, now take off your shoes and become one of the land. So mm. almost every nation I go to now, Sarah, the Lord will invite me these times where I will literally take off my shoes and literally just get swirled in the dirt and just become one with the land. And again, there's a dimension again, where all of a sudden there's a whole other prophetic dimension where I can actually hear. And it's almost like I can hear what the land is saying. It's like, I can hear what generations have gone through. I can, it's all of a sudden, there's just a whole new wow. dimension that gets opened up. And again, wow. it goes back to that, you know, the, the healing component, that salvation component that God wants to bring to land. And he's looking for ambassadors like you and I, and many, many, you, many of those that are listening, that if even if you're not from that land, just begin to follow that. Mm. Get the soles of your feet in the dirt. Yes. And with, with the mindful understanding that you want to hear what God's saying, even the redemptive purposes of that nation or of that city or wherever God may have you go. All of a sudden, there. I, I'm just saying this is my own experience. It, there's a whole new revelatory dimension that gets opened up when I do that each and every time. Wow, that's phenomenal. And I love it's almost as if, like you said, when you get your, your feet down deep, you can feel almost the history of the land and the history of the people. And I love that it's almost as like the land has memory, right? Truly. Yeah. It's yes, amazing. absolutely. Yeah. And so I love the opportunity that we have to actually, well, it's a couple of them, like I'm thinking about so many things at once, but it's interesting that people are even into this um, uh, practice of like grounding, like actually getting their feet in the earth because it's like healing for your body. And I know it's probably more of a, a alternative or new age practice, but of course it begins in the Lord. 
Um, but I just think that's interesting that even the world recognizes that it's good for us to actually plant be ourselves. connected to the land. connected to the land. And, yes. I, and I love what you're saying um, about, um, you know, get, going into different nations. Because I, I know when I've traveled to a different, a particular Pacific island some years ago, like the cry of my heart that I sensed from the Lord was, I have to be with my people. And I'm like this Aussie chick, you know, on the Goldie, which is the a beach town. And he, and he like called me to this nation. It was literally put my feet on the land. So like to, to carry the presence of the Lord. And we know he's not limited to different people and places and spaces, but that was the mission and the assignment that he gave me. Yeah, as a foreigner to come into, into this space. Um, Absolutely. But, but I was reminded then of, of the scripture that says in him, there's no longer you know, Jew or Greek, slave or free, male and, or female. And so we all have this opportunity, even as ones who are made in his image and have come from the dirt, as you say, to, to really connect first and foremost with the spirit of God, but then to release his heart, his desire, his healing um, to, to the nation. Yeah, it's so amazing. It's you know, so and that's exciting. the beautiful thing is that even as the, even as the land is healed, people get healed at the same time. So even right. people, group, there's something, and you right. know, we, we've got an assignment that we're, we're we're putting in motion right now. We we uh, recently lo relocated to Dallas, uh, Dallas Fort Worth, Texas, and the the land that we're on right now. Cindy Jacobs had told us, she was, I keep seeing contention in the land, contention in the land. You have to address the contention in the land. And so we began to address it more in the spirit realm. And the same thing, we got our feet in the ground. But all of a sudden, when I did that, I all, I saw, I would say that it would have been the, the tribe, the First Nations tribe that would have occupied that land, you know, 150 or so years ago. And I saw all the injustice. I saw things that were going on and I'm going, oh my gosh. You know, so again, the, the realm has opened up. I was beginning to see history played out. And then the Lord whispered, said, you need to get a Comanche, which was the tribe that inhabited that area, get a Comanche. And we've, we've since now met some Christian Comanches, which is important because what he was saying is that first we need to do an incarnational, because I also have Anglo, I'm European descent. So, you know, again, all of that too. So I can stand in the gap for that component as well, which we've done several times. But, but what, what he was showing me is that as we invite the Comanche on the land and we ask for their forgiveness and extend that truly, then what the Lord said, then you need to ask them to release the land. Oh, wow. And so again, there's all of the injustice and innocent bloodshed, all of those things. But yet again, when you've got a son of the most high God standing on behalf of even his own people group or heritage, then releasing the land from the injustice. I'm telling you, there's whole dimensions that I think that if we begin to continue to press into this nation upon nation, all of the, all of the things that we're going to begin to see that will actually bring healing to nations. Mm. And then, then I'll tell you what, the Great Commission, where we're called to go into all the world and make disciples of nations. It's not just making disciples of people. It's literally going in and, it, you know, as the apostles were originally called, is to go in and bring the reality of the kingdom culture mm. into every nation. And I think part of that is there, there's real things that have to be released from the land, even for wow. some of those that take place. So yes, we'll yes, let you know so as powerful. it unfolds because we're, yes. we still have yet to do that. And uh, yeah. yeah, we'll definitely let you know. Yeah, please do. And it's so interesting. Again, I, I was speaking with someone this week and I want to talk about the airspace for a moment. I know we've talked about the land, but I was speaking with this uh, person this week and um, she's from a, a particular nation. I'm being a little bit cry cryptic on purpose. Um, yes. She's from a particular nation. And she said that what they discovered when she was there um, in post-COVID, when she could return, uh, was that... Um, in the airspace that the nation had um, the authority in, in the natural over its territory. But then, um, so I don't know if you know this, that when I didn't, when planes fly overhead, different nations come in, there's actually, um, they have to pay to actually come into that airspace. And so That's there's right. revenue, right, that, that nations receive from that. So this um, place that's particularly, it's situated geographically where there is a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of air travel, right? And so they, what they discovered was that they only had, get this, 
somehow, somewhere, it was an injustice. Um, they only had the authority to a certain level of feet. And then above okay. that, another nation owned their airspace. So that means that yes. when the, the planes came through, they weren't receiving the revenue from their airspace over their own nation. Isn't that like wow. crazy? Wow. Anyway, and so they like went to war in the spirit, put it right. And it's been a, a process the last couple of years because legislation, other nations had to like release it, right? And, and agree, yeah. yes, that's not a good idea. But it's been restored back to them, which means that the revenue is now given to the, the rightful owners, to the That's people so good. who live in that space. So I love that even as we can release um, you know, justice and the heart of God to the ground, we can all, like, I was like, wow, you can do that in the air as well, in the, in the natural airspace over a nation. I just thought it was remarkable. It's, fu it's funny. I, I do I do that often. In fact, even when I go and we, I, even on our land or on our home and all that, I'll do my prayers and I'll, I'll ask for the release of the angelic host. Then I'll ask mm -hmm. God to pl place the canopy um, even over the second heavens, all the way down to the very center of the earth, like literally like encapsulate, lying with the precious blood of Jesus. But there's times where, you know, vultures. And so you know, vultures in themselves are not bad. Okay. They're, they're unclean animals, but the, what they represent actually is, is, is a spirit of death. And so anytime a vulture comes into my, over our, over our property, I command it to leave. I said, in the name of Jesus Christ, mm. there is no place for that spirit of death. Now you must leave yeah. this airspace. Now there's even times where helicopters will fly over our airspace. And I'll, I'll, I said, get out of here. That's not your airspace. Go. You know? <laughs> I said, I've done that very same thing. It's so funny. I love that. It's very cool. But I just love how God's heart is for, for people and for nations and right. for them and to come into their God-given inheritance. It's just beautiful as he created. Amen. Amen. Yeah, beautiful, the redemption beautiful. and just the, the, the restitution and, and restoration, right? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And so with all that in mind, it's just been brilliant, Stephen. Do you have a, a word of encouragement for, for those listening today? I do. You know, we are in the most strategic time. There's one scripture I want to leave you with, and this is just, just brilliant. This is from uh, Habakkuk 1.5. And it says, the Lord replied and said, look around at the nations. Look and be amazed, for I'm doing something in your own day, something you wouldn't believe even if someone told you about it. Now, we've just shared a whole bunch of stuff. <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you. We're in a season where God is going to do the extraordinary, unusual dimensions. Uh, we're, we're in a whole new season of encounter. And I feel like for many of you that are listening, you are you are heading in. In fact, I decree and declare that all of you that are tuning in are heading into a whole new season of revelation. And part of that, you're mm -hmm. to become one with the Father's heart in a fresh new way. And even what I'm seeing is that even in places where it's almost been like a brass ceiling, where it feels like your prayers just keep hitting. I just literally saw the Lord just like literally tear veils over nations right now, where there's going to be just this, this bullet straight through thing. And it's not going to be where, you know, Daniel had to contend for 21 days. But the, the reality that I feel like the, the warfare over some of these nations is has already been accomplished since the day that you first prayed. But what I saw was like this rain of revelation, this rain of grace that's coming down upon you. And I declare that, you know, God is doing something special in our day. And and even as we've been sharing with you, uh, don't doubt. There's a whole new season and a whole new dimension of faith. And in fact, I want to release that faith over you. Mm -hmm. I just decree and declare today a fresh revelation of the faith that is available to you. And you will be overwhelmed by the kindness of love of your heavenly father. And so I just bless you with that in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Oh, Stephen Springer, you've just been brilliant. And it's been an absolute joy and delight to have you on the show. Thank you so, so much for being my guest. Uh, it's been a real pleasure and a real honor, sir. I really appreciate it. Thank you.